start recording. All right, here we go. So, all right. So yesterday, yes, uh, yeah. So I've been busy this week, and I just wanted to sort of, cause this is what I've been doing. We were sort of talking about what we've been doing, um, um, fun wise, and uh, this is what I've been been doing work wise. Just uh, as an update. Um, let's see. Where? How do I search? Why can't I search? All right. Okay. Fine. Um. All right, I think I told you guys about this, but, um, okay. Yeah, I've been doing this thing, which is like a patch for the Linux kernel. Um, and this has taken, oh my God, how many emails are in this chain? All right. This has taken like a long time. I've been working on this thing since November. And so basically like you have to write like just, so the way that it works is like, everything is done via the mailing list so like email mailing list and so you you write your your patches for the git repo that is the linux kernel and then you basically you 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 send out each commit as a patch and so then everyone so like this is this is the first or let's see this is the it should be wait three or four Zero four four four. Okay, this has no rhyme or reason to the ordering. Um, okay. Oh, one of four. Yeah. So basically, this is like the first commit, and then this is damn it. This is the third commit for some reason, and this is the fourth commit and the second commit because why would we organize the email system so that we could read them in order? I don't know. Um, but basically each commit gets sent out as an email and then everyone will start commenting on the email and I'll sort of show you guys how this goes but let's see and Dave Dave gave me a review here this one might have a better review so yeah so they'll start commenting in line on the email and like then they'll they'll give you all their their comments on this and then you have to go back and forth and send more emails so it's not like github where you can do pull requests and stuff you guys might run into this and this is why i'm explaining it also so you know why i'm slow at responding but so yeah so this is this is this is something something to be aware of is that not everyone is using github um and a lot of these older projects that you might interact with are uh, are probably are, are usually like mailing list based and so you have to you have to be somewhat familiar with this idea of like sending emails as as your review process which can get interesting um but yeah um so let's see uh so yeah that's why i've been slow and then the other thing was i needed to get um so suit Sudhanchu is tackling this massive um, thing, which I'm now just going to relabel Excel. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I was outlining this for him because I thought he seems to be making pretty good progress. And if I am still slow uh, on my compliance tasks, then maybe this will get into the next release. Um, but as you guys can see, there's a lot, there's a lot to this. Um, basically adding the accuracy guys, right? Um, the accuracy plugins. So, and it, it, he's making pretty good progress. And if he jumps on, we can talk about that a little bit. But, um, so yeah, I haven't gotten the chance to to get everything, to get to get reviews on everything. And then in the process of that, um, um. Let's see. In the process of that, I um been working on so get check out master. So Himanshu, the reason why I haven't gotten back to you is because uh because I wanted to write down the yeah. stuff that we were running into here. Um and in in part of the model the the contributing your model docs because you were you know the things that you're you're running into were actually well this is contribute this is operations but um, essentially the issue here is that we need to add it to and and I was sort of 
I was I was fumbling on on how best to document this, which is also why it was taking a while. But essentially, I think I yeah I think I pushed it. So essentially, the issue here was that um, you need to add, and I commented it up this file, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add the documentation that talks about this. But but in this file, right, um, we need to add it to this bottom section because this is where if we have one plugin that depends on another plugin we need to install that plugin um and so before in the ci and so that's why you were getting that issue right because your issue was that the um uh, that tensorflow was not installed right yeah entry point not found yeah entry point not found yeah because tensorflow is not installed when you're running that plugin because it needs to be added to this file here. So I was hoping to document that and send you the documentation, but I'm sorry, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't quick enough to do that. Um, so let's see, let me just put a note on here. Um, need to add to um, this section here, right? And so you just do it in the same format and I'm, yeah, so I'm, Hopefully, hopefully we can get a, a, a proper documentation for this because I think we have a lot of things like this where you know, like adding to scripts, docs, care, and stuff that that we need to uh, um, yeah. we need to have docs for. Yeah. Um, let's see. And the other thing I also noticed is that we should probably we could probably automate this scripts, docs, care thing because uh, I was messing with. Um, Let's see. I was messing with the. Okay, let me let me just start writing these down because I'm not writing any notes right now. Okay, so how's it going, Ogden? So okay, so I totally forgot today was Friday. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I've been confused all week. I was I was like on on Wednesday and Thursday. I was sure it was Sunday both days somehow. I don't know why. One day <laughs> yeah, after. Yeah, I thought so I was today positive. was the weekend. Yeah. Right. Like Sunday. <laughs> Yeah. And then I go suddenly got a notification like, why is John putting meeting on a Sunday? <laughs> uh, it happens. Um, okay, so let's see. Let me just recap what I was saying here. So basically, um, uh, we um, plan outlined for adding accuracy plugin. Uh, Sudhanshu is working on this uh, phase one almost complete uh, and then let me put a link to this okay all right and this is something actually well maybe he'll join and then we can go over it but if not then yeah um okay so then the other thing was okay the other thing was um, basically we need more docs on how to contribute plugins. Um, so let's just okay. So and this isn't is this this is just this is the tutorial. Where did it go? This is we're just doing the tutorial right now, but obviously we had missed the entry point in scripts docs care so basically we want to say that um, let's just help let's let's help help me go through here and, and we'll try to capture all of the things so um, we can use updated updated uh, diff well, slash plugins dot py to uh, uh, phase out script stocks care um, so that needs to be done and I'll explain that in a moment um, the other thing is that we need to uh, so need to add to um, uh, it's that CI dot depths um, if there are any non pip installable dependencies And I'm sure I'm forgetting things. So what else am I forgetting here that we have to do when we contribute a new plugin? Oh, they need examples. I think I have that now. Examples. Each. 
Ouch. And uh, we also need to add something in testing dot YML or testing. Yeah, do we mention the CI test? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Um, dot, uh, so GitHub dot workflows testing dot YAML. And I think I'm now remembering that we have some docs somewhere. Um, so where are those existing docs? Um, contributing. See, if we can't remember where they are, then this is not good. Uh, let's see, Git and GitHub. Yeah, I think it's here. No, it's not here. Uh, testing. Yeah, we don't have anything explicitly about contributing, so... Or, well, I mean, all of this is about contributing is the problem. There's just, like, a lot here. Um, we need sort of, like, a... All of this is important, damn it. Um, but we need sort of like a, a once over for things. Oh, here we go. Codebase layout. Okay, this should not be under codebase layout and notes. All right, so. Yeah, I think we should rearrange ones because oftentimes I need to search where are the things. Yeah. In docs. All right, so where where do you guys think we should put this since we're talking about this right now? Where might be a good place? Like right under the top level contributing, like adding a new plugin or something? Or I still feel like I contributing is kind of hidden. We should arrange stuff like uh, in contributing and in another another, another file, like another menu. Yeah. yeah, we could so have it. We can cut it off in two parts because there are there is a lot in contributing and yeah we should just uh, dial it down a little bit for the uh, a new user to get yeah used to this. that's a very good point so so maybe uh and what do you guys so what do you guys think about this is what i was sort of initially thinking here is that you know we've got we started we split out this new model tutorial right into writing the model and packaging the model and then I was thinking of doing another one on contributing the model um, does that sort of make does that sound like it makes sense um, as a flow there or would there be a better place because I'm not sure about that either that's just sort of my initial idea um, but I don't think like you'll expect to find uh, the, like, you would you see a new model tutorial like, at least I would like I think that the new model tutorial is mostly how to write a model yeah yeah. That's what I think about. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so I mean, let's see. Where else would be a good place for this? Then, sort of like where, where if I wanted to contribute something, like what, what would be where, where would I? Let's see. Well, GitHub has the contributing guidelines that it pops up if you go to a given repo, right? Um, let's see. So if you go somewhere and you open a pull request. Um, let's see. If you open a pull request, I believe it says, well, I'm pretty sure it says, it says go to contributing, right? Um, which is this doc, which just has a link to our docs, right? So maybe we should put something in here or... Yeah, I don't know. What do you get? Does anybody have any suggestions on on where where this should go? Like, and and so Sakshan, you were saying we need a little bit of an easier easier entry, right? And then we can we can give more meat and and reference more meat of the documentation somewhere else, right? Yeah, the I think the more complex stuff should not be in the contributing the main contributing okay. menu. Yeah. So. Okay, so the more complex stuff should not be in here. Like setting up your editor and uh, things like that are just secondary, because if if a person knows if a person knows his ways around, he only needs to be uh, familiar with DFFML workflow. Yeah, that's and true. Not that's true. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. 
let's see. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't need this whole thing. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we could move most of the stuff that's like not. So you're, are you saying like we could move, um, you know, basically move everything that's not sort of directly related to, um, like basically move move some of this stuff out of contributing like maybe we have contributing which is you know something like adding a new plugin and uh you know how to add your stuff to the ci tests and stuff contributing is all about just things to get your pull request accepted and then other stuff goes under some other section which is more of like i don't know what we'd call it um but, you know, there's plenty of other things. There's things under here like, you know, Google Summer of Code isn't necessarily like you guys are contributing. Yes, but it doesn't tell people how to contribute. Um, it's more of what you've been contributing. Um, so, yeah, OK, well, we'll workshop this a little bit. I'll, I'll try to figure it out. Um, so uh, probably best to split uh, to make everything under the contributing header just about things you need to do to get your poll request merged all right great all right um okay so uh, i think uh, i think we can, we should add one section for faqs uh, FAQs. There are a few things. Uh, yeah, so, so there are a few things, some misconceptions uh, or something like that. We can add the miscellaneous things, basically. Yeah. So in yeah, it's a nice idea. Like in FAQs, we can link to the pages uh, that. Ah, can be, there you go. Uh, That's a great. From, from yeah. Okay. That that yeah, that will help people. I I mean, I always like to see an FAQ. That's one of the first things I always read. So. Um, okay, so let's make a let's make a uh, let's make an issue here, and then let's all sort of say what the what the uh, possible question answer things would be here. Um, so uh, all right, great. Um, Okay, so All right, so let's come up with a list of questions and answers uh, likely the questions will the or likely the Answers will link to pages in the docs. Sweet. Great idea. FAQ page. Good stuff. All right. Anything else on documentation while, while we're at it? See. Hey, did we add a documentation for for jeans in data flow? I remember we still had to do that. Uh, added what for what? Uh, origins. Oh, data origins flow. and data flow. Yeah, yeah. We still needed. I still need to do that. Yeah. So need. Yeah, you you were telling that you will be clipping your, the YouTube videos. Oh, that's right. The explanation yeah. ones, and we can link them in the FAQs or in the contributing. Yeah, great idea, great idea. So we need we need to clip the YouTube videos and add them in or links or uh, where they are on specific topics and add links to them from the docs. 
Okay, and I've been hearing from lots of people that YouTube videos are a great way to learn things. So we should, I should, we should, I mean, if you guys feel like making YouTube videos, just recording yourself doing something, that's great. We'll post them on the channel. Otherwise, I'll try to do it. I've obviously got, I've got, I've got a bit of a full plate. Um, so I, you know, I do as much as I try. Um, but uh, I can't get to everything. So, um, I'd say good news is actually I have some update on the, on the side of, 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 Hopefully, getting some more scope to work on DFFML um, more closer to full time is uh, basically I got involved. I think I told you I, I emailed some people who were higher up, and and they um, I've been added to some working group um, to figure out how to do track project readiness. Um, so like whether or not a project is is ready to be shipped and ready to be reused by other projects within Intel, and we'll sort of be using the you know the data flow side of things to like collect metrics on projects and whether they're ready to be used or not. So hopefully, I mean hopefully they still like I'm doing a presentation next week, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that could be good. Hopefully, I get more time um, once I finish up this kernel patch. I should have more time, especially since I've sort of gotten that handed down from the top so hopefully hopefully that speeds things along um okay so um okay then all right let's just go over since since i sort of derailed us from our usual thing there um let's go over uh saksham what have you got on your plate and what do we need to talk about today so yeah there was uh, the last time i asked you to review the pull request of the big uh data flow example, image operation examples. And uh, I've added a new pull request today for the PyTorch model. OK. Uh, and I just needed your input that if I'm going in the right direction with that, so I can add tests. OK, It's great. working correctly. Oh, yes. This and one. I'm getting. Why? What happened with this one? Why was I? I've looked at this one several times now, and I can't remember why I didn't. Give feedback. Um, go away. Um, oh yeah. Um, okay, so let me just let me just let me get the notes over here. All right. Okay. So image. Let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, do the thing where it gives me the. Nope, it's not going to. All right. Let's just talk about this now. Um, okay, so this guy, we want to talk about this guy. We want to talk about the new one. Oh, you added the PyTorch model. All right. Hello. Hello? Himachu? Uh, yeah. Are you yeah. testing your mic? Uh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't hear. Um, oh, basically, uh, I was just talking to Saksham about uh, his pull request here. So it looks like he's added. Oh. Um, he added a PyTorch model. So. so oh, okay. oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So All right. Okay. So these two PRs, and then was there? What else did you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about related to the uh, these two PRs only. Okay. So let's see what else we got here. Oh wait, did I need that? No, I didn't need that. Okay. Okay, and we probably need that. All right. Um, and this can be unpinned. Okay. So let's see, and let me say, 
just one second. Let me while we're doing this, let's just say let's add this to uh, let's add this to the Gitter channel and tell everyone. Uh, so if anyone has ideas for the FAQ page, FAQ. Q page on the docs site. Uh, please comment them in the issue. All right, great. Um, and actually, let me tag all. Okay, um, and then let's see. So Himachu, we have your pull request, right? And uh, yeah. Okay. And what else? Anything else at the moment? Um, uh, no, I'm uh, writing operations. So uh, once I start adding sample, then oh, yeah. we will talk. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. And so let's see. Da, 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 da. Oops, wait. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Augen. So we've got, yeah, I know I've got uh, a bunch of your PRs here, so. I think just to, and chatbot, you are already reviewed, so. Okay. Like, I made the changes which you requested. Okay. And now there's just uh, the uh, distributor orchestrator thing. Okay, yeah, and that so one, like, I think we talked uh, about. Like it's all, yeah, uh, I made some changes, so. I think like I'll continue after you review it once because it's already some 300 things and it might be painful to change. Yeah, so that's actually something else I wanted to talk about is that, um, um, so let's see. Okay, so... Okay, and that's what just straight Pull request, pull request. We're approaching a thousand commits. I wonder if we're going to get there. We're approaching a thousand commits and issues slash pull requests. So. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Uh, duh. That's what I'm doing. Okay. And that's not what I wanted. Okay. All right. Sorry for my organizational hell here, but. Sometimes it helps. Okay. I think there is an add-on for getting the title of the. I thought you know it used to be auto-populating, so I don't know why it used to like just. It is sometimes like that, but just if you buggy. just paste it, it there is an add-on. I think. Okay. Yeah. Let me. I'll look into that. Okay. Well, not right now. Um. Sometimes I wish everything just had Vim controls. Wait, all the time. Um, let's see. Okay. So, let's... Okay, and then... Okay, so... Let's talk about this first, because in case we're probably... I mean, we're probably going to run over today. So, um, let's talk about, real quick, about Nat's Orchestrator. Let me say, uh, since... This is going to be a large uh, set of changes. We'll open another branch um, to track um, uh, uh, to merge PRs into. Um, 
and then we'll also put that so since so this is the same thing that we're going to do with Sutanchu's stuff is since uh, accuracy score it's going to be large percentage all right great um so all right oops shit um all right so and what i mean by this is basically uh, so what we're going to do and i'll just show you guys um so what we're going to do is we're going to when you guys when you open a port okay so if we have something that's like a massive set of changes um oh he already changed it great nice um sweet Wow. All right. He's on top of it. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're we're basically we're gonna we're gonna try to merge things into different branches. And like I kind of outlined, and and it would be good if you could once you know more. I mean, Ogden, you're really sort of like you know you don't know what you don't know at this point, right? With the accuracy scoring stuff, it's pretty clear what what our path is. We know we know how to like it's this is a defined defined thing. We've done things like this before. Um, with the Nats orchestrator, it's a little bit more fuzzy, right? Um, yeah. But if you could, so what I did for this one was I laid out, oops, no, wrong one. Um, 13 of 33, oh God. Um, so I laid out each set of things that should be in each, each PR as a separate phase um, and now I added checkboxes and whatnot um, so um, uh, what would be better is if we maybe you made a like if once you knew something was you were gonna have to do something you make an issue and we try to make like one issue for each thing each pull, pull request that you're gonna do right um, that would be ideal, um, and you know you could name name them like it would be like you know DF Nats or something, uh, and then whatever your your PR is right, um, or like service node or whatever right because you're probably gonna have to add that node service. Um, and uh, so basically, yeah, try to think about your. So here's I'll give you some the the Intel. So the Intel speak for this is 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 AR um, action required. Um, and that's like anytime, anytime anybody says, um, like if you, if you, if you go in a meeting and, and, or like you, you're on an email chain, people will be like, okay, so who's going to take that AR, which is like, okay, somebody came up with something to do and now someone has to do it. And so you, you talk about taking ARs. Um, so your, your ARs are going to be basically, um, you know, uh, when, so, uh, so. So, uh, so when you uh, come up with things that need to be done for the Nats uh, series, uh, create issues. I mean, and it's good for all of us to create issues. Um, uh, when we do, like, I, ideally, we would all be creating issues for everything. Um, this is this is specific to what's going on here because for me reviewing things, if it's better to create in certain cases, it's better to create new branches because then every time we merge a pull request, then I can review the next pull request on top of that rather than reviewing commit series. Then I have to pull out my editor, or, you know, I have to pull it all down and review it there. And, and it gets comp more complicated for me to review, which means I'm not going to catch as many issues. Um, so uh, try to merge one PR per issue um, into the Nats branch. Um, so, and then I'll go create the Nats branch right now. Uh, yeah, I think like we can, you now we set a checkpoint where operations are getting instantiated and we have to work on inputs and redundancy networks. We have to do what? Like at this point, like operations are getting instantiated, like yeah. the primary nodes and sub nodes are like you know, connecting each other and all the operations get instantiated. So I think we can call this a checkpoint. 
this, yeah. So this would be our first checkpoint. Yeah, great. Yeah. So let's let's uh, so uh, make an issue to describe all the changes that you've made in the uh, current open pull requests. Uh, will uh, John? will review and will merge into the Nats branch. And then that way we can, the other thing about this is ideally we try to keep all the CI passing, right? And so we can break certain things and not break other things, but know that we have to break them later. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, yes, yes. But, uh, but it, it will, it will, this is going to make it easier for all of us overall. Um, so let's see, um, and then we'll just go and just so everybody can see this. Um, again, you might know how to see this, but in case anybody doesn't know, um, this is basically when you open a new pull request, you can select a branch, and you can also edit the uh, branch here that you're going against, and we'll choose Nats. Um, so then we'll this all the changes will will be merged into that branch when we merge the PR. Um, Okay, and so yeah, so this is this is yeah, so this is this is you know targeted things that that might might like you know long on, ongoing long reviews. This will be the sort of process that we follow, um, and actually we should sort of document this process too. So uh, they are. Yeah, this should go under contributing. What? This should go under contributing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this uh, documenting. This process should, or let me let me add it under this shit that we had it, and we'll sort of take note of the time here at 44 minutes when we're way over. Okay, um, so documenting of the splitting uh, PR or the long running changes as. Uh, separate branches needs to be documented. All right. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, let's see here. Let's just start chugging on these and we'll see uh, where we get with everything. So, Okay. Um, all right. So, Saksham, on this, the the usage for image operations. This is not clear what's going on here. Um, I mean, like we can read the code, but why why we're doing this is not obvious. I don't see an obvious explanation for for why. Uh, why I have added happened. an explanation. Okay. In the okay. Let's see, so where is that? So, split all the images are now. Let's put the image into. Okay, I might not have seen this. Let's put these images into Flower Set Train and Flower Set Test, each directory containing subdirectories corresponding to the 17 flower classes and split. Okay, let me just pull this down. Um, and this is. Which one? Uh, What's the branch on this guy? I think it's image of the example. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to debate whether I cut my hair and get rid of the mohawk or basically cut the sides and make the mohawk even seem even longer. It's a, it's, it's a tough decision. The problem is, like, if I don't spike it up every day, then it just looks ridiculous. Um, so. Also, my current set of dilemmas. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. I should just live it up. I should live it up. All right. Okay. So tutorials, data flow tutorial. Or wait. Um. Wait. It's in use cases. Use cases. That's right. Okay. So, nice. Um. And actually, I'm kind of thinking we might want to combine some of these tutorial or just move it all under. Yeah, I don't know. They're a little bit different, right? It's like, yeah, uh, maybe. We, yeah, we should probably move them all under tutorials because it's kind of ridiculous that we have two places. Like, they're definitely different things, but you know, tutorials could be like, you know, instead of new model, new operations, new source, data flow tutorials, source tutorials, operations tutorial, model tutorials. Uh, probably is probably is going to. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think it makes sense to have them like structured like this, or do you think we should? Uh, I think we should name the use cases to examples. Oh, examples. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Rename use use cases to examples. All right, great. Um, and maybe we'll rename examples to usage. Does that make sense? I sort of hesitate oh, yes. to have two two example headers. Okay, so rename examples uh, header to usage. Yep. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. What was I thinking? Okay. All right. So let's go back here. Cool stuff. All right. Nice. SHA verification. Great stuff. Um, hey. Uh, okay. So one thing. What the fuck? Okay. All right, so and how long is this going to take? I don't, it doesn't take that long. Okay. Sweet. All right, okay. So, a couple notes on this. Um this is a very fast internet connection, I'm realizing, and uh, like I don't know what we're at here. This is like my work internal one, and I think they're at like 250 megs. So that anything that doesn't return instantly, I get suspicious of. Um, and I know that my home connection and most people's connections are not are not that good. So I'm thinking maybe we should we should um, strip off the uh, the silent there. Um, so what is that? It's just like what is the big S? Right. Show error. Okay, yeah, so let's strip off the big S there. So just because uh, most things are, are, are a bit shorter than this. Um, so might be good to have it. Um, might be good to have it. Okay, and then the other thing is, uh, this is going to sound very nitpicky, um, but also part of our Intel regulations that we're following is that um, it, we basically we follow the same thing that, that uh, NIST recommends, which is the, basically the U.S. government cybersecurity agency, whatever, and they basically say by like I think it's 2030 to be more resistant to quantum computers, um, we should be using SHA-384 rather than SHA-512 or SHA-256, I mean. Um, so like, we're going to go ahead and, 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 and SHA, SHA... We're going to... God damn it. So everywhere we should use SHA-384. SHA um, uh, or SHA-512. Um, so let's see, 17 flowers. So we'll just replace this. Um, and so SHA-3 and this is another thing that should go in the contributing guidelines. 
Um, so let's see. And I don't know how the hell this one fits in there. Um, it's very, very abstract, yeah, random the, information. Random information, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we need to document that we use SHA-384 uh, and not uh, or 512 and no less uh, based on NIST guidelines. I mean, we hope to be around till 2030, right? So that would be great. Would be definitely we would be. Uh, um, hopefully, people are, are using this in 2030. We'll see. Um, okay, so okay. Dot, dot, or, Uh, all right, fuck it. All right, um, we've got those installed, I think. Oh, I also changed the version command the other day. No, I'm not running the right version. Oh, you. Oh, you don't have the updated one. Okay, I think we're right. We have those installed. All right, so let's untow this. All right. Wow, that on tar is very fast. All right, so all the images are now in the folder called JPEG. Yes, they are. Um, let's split these images into flower dataset train and flower dataset test directories, each directory containing subdirectories corresponding to the 17 flower classes using split.py. Um, and then we've got this lovely file, um, which is split.py. OK, so we also need to mention that we need to install CV2. Um, so, I think that when we are in, uh, getting them to install the FFML operations, it oh is, yeah, that's uh, right, that installs uh, it. Yeah. Okay, great. Good call. All right, so cat split uh, py. Uh, All right, so. So, why are we using CV2? There's no reason for that. Okay. I just use CV2. All right, let's 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 not use that, because I have a feeling that's going to make this uh, slower. Um, so, let's see. I believe we should use... Um, let's see. So, let's time. Bang, bang. Let's see how this goes. And then we'll try to use OS copy file. Or copy. All right, so 12 seconds. What is this? Maybe like I can add a print statement there, pro uh, the, like processed folder, created folder. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, I'm more, I'm more, my, my, uh, my comment on this is more to do with the fact that I don't think we need to use um, CV2 because that loads the image into memory and parses it, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. So. All right, so let's just do, let's see what happens if we do. So that was 12 seconds. So let's just do, let's try SHUtil, um, and let's just try, oops, shit, no, I did it again, Not copy, um, Let's see how fast that is. All right, great. 0.38 seconds. Sweet. Let's go with that. Um, 
I mean, as long as that they produces. That. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, That's I think. Cool. Yeah, they, I think the the only issue there was that you were you're basically you were reading the image in and CV like if you do I am read I believe it creates that image object which does all the parsing yeah. right and if we're just moving yeah. files then let's just move files right okay so so does it cop it's co it copies right yeah it copies the file contents so okay let's see Yeah, so when flower, okay, so, and, and I guess my other question here is, is how do you know which one is which? Like, that's just how the data set works? Uh, like, that's in the guidelines of the flower data set okay. website. Like, tells you first that. 80 images are of uh, first category, then next 80, and then next 80. Okay, so it looks like we don't have 80 images in here, though. Like I've splitted them in seventy and ten for training and test. So okay. Like oh, the, so this is test. The eighty images. Uh, first seventy are in the training uh, directory, and the next ten are in the test directory. Oh yes, which is said next year. Okay. So. Okay. Let's move this slightly above this. So let's move this above when you run Python, um, so that mainly. Not not for for people like me who can't read, but but mainly because then we don't have two blocks here right next to each other, which is just slightly less aesthetically pleasing. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, so let's just move this up. Let's uh, let's move this in between the. I know I get I get very nitpicky on the documentation, but right, it's it's what everyone sees, right? So it's gotta we want it we want it to we want it to look good, we want it to look as good as possible. Um, the train directory, and I know it all doesn't look as good as possible. So we, we I, I've got some stuff I need to write that rewrite that I did. Um, let's move this between the uh, literal include and uh, code block okay so and then we can get rid of this guy oh and then let's i forgot about the cat split okay so let's do this here hey uh random question if yeah. you like run so no have to update does it break anything <laughs> um, no, apt. If you do update, it shouldn't break anything. If you do upgrade, it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna do that. Yeah. So, update. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I yeah, mean, update, update shouldn't fine. break anything. Upgrade might. It depends what the hell is going on with your system. Usually, you can install things after you did an update, but it won't screw up. And and if you do an install after you do an update, then it'll upgrade things that need to be upgraded, which might screw things up. But but I personally have a history of messing up Debian machines for some reason. So, okay. I, I mean, I would just say, you know, be, be wary. This is why, <laughs> yeah, I recently started using Fedora, but basically my, my only, my, the only advice I can give after using Linux for the past few years is, is put your stuff on a separate home partition and uh, be ready to wipe out your entire, entire OS at any moment. Um, yeah, I do that. Later. Yeah, right. You can't. You, you just there's just there's just no way to know what's gonna happen when they update stuff. All right, great. Data flow source. That's a good job linking. Um, oh, what the fuck? Oh, I I did. That's that's the truth. I did keyboard interrupt. All right. Um, so data flow create. Nice. Okay. So create a data flow file, which we use by the data flow preprocessors before feeding the model. Okay, so let's maybe also link to, okay, so let's maybe rearrange this. Okay, let's see, let's see. Also, like in the di diagram command, I edited some stuff out like the default values when there were a lot of definitions and it was getting kind of confusing to see how the diagram is working. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So I so, think, uh, so I wanted to tell you that we should maybe add something in the diagram command that if there is no if there is a default value and there is no input for that then we shouldn't show that in the simple uh, okay flag. great so yeah this is okay let's let's definitely do that and when you notice things like this let's definitely make issues too um so let's see uh so it did code review um uh let's add this to this sort of list of everybody stuff uh, okay, so uh, issue. Um, uh, we should uh, remove or not show. Wait, okay, what did you just say? Like if there are no inputs for a definition and it has a default value, it shows in the diagram command. Uh, it shows in the diagram. You can run the diagram and see that there will be a lot of definitions that are not being used. Okay, yeah, let's see. All right, and then my other comment on this is let's say something about like, because this giant blob of text means nothing, right, at this point, right? So, um, Let's just do, okay, great, that works. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, there's a lot of things here, okay, so, and I'm gonna have a pain of ass at the time of copying that, so. Um, or wait, now I have my thing. Okay. Uh, okay. No. Ah, fuck it. Um, all right. So, and also, do we do config YAML? Okay, we also need config YAML um, if you're going to use YAML. So let's see. Um, okay. And then let's see. Where is that? Uh, the install is up here. Okay. Oh, here's another thing. We need documentation for um, uh, how to write. We need documentation for how to write documentation. Um, now, Yash, I mean, I, well, it sounds like, you know, Yash, I don't know what Yash's bandwidth is. I know he's also mentoring for some other stuff. Um, but, you know, that, that plugin we have might be might that, that I, ooh, that would be actually that's probably a really high priority isn't it um but basically you know how how to write documentation and documentation that can and is tested um so you've split all these into sh files right so do you have a test for all this you do oh uh, yes i've added a test awesome great great job okay so Let's see. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, the other thing is these. Okay. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was in the middle of commenting here. Let me. Sorry. All right. Um, we need different config YAML to if we're going to use it. Okay, so, and then the other thing I was going to say is to pre-process the data before feeding it to a model. So after this paragraph, uh, explain what pre-processing needs to be done and why um, link to the image and let's just see here so um, I believe docs plugins DFML operation
Okay, so... Oh. For adding a new plugin type. Yeah. Sorry, one second. Adding a new plugin type. Um, add page template under scripts docs templates. Alright, yeah, I almost forgot about that. Um, I was thinking about that the other day. I couldn't remember what it was. Alright, and then I'm just the reason why I'm here is because I thought there were, okay, there's a label. Yeah, okay, so there's a label for each one. So do, you're going to want ref and then that. So link to the image operations. Uh, make sure we have, okay, so in another PR, make sure we have doc strings for all of them explaining what they do, right? And you're going to explain. So basically here, you're going to say, damn it. Here you're going to say, right after you say create the data flow config file, da, 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 you're going to say, um, you know, basically you're going to say, right, the, here's our data flow is going to do this set of operations in order to pre-process the image. And here's what each of, of these operations does and why we're doing this, right? And then you can take those explanations and paste them into the doc strings as another PR um, so that you have, you know, explanations of what each operation does because we need those doc strings there too. Um, okay. And then uh, finally, link Yeah, let to... me find some of those explanations because they are not even in the open cv documentation yeah sometimes. right you and you know why you're doing this right so it's tell tell everyone else why right okay um yeah. so finally link to the doc or to the image operations using using um uh, ref oh, now i have to do back ticks I think it's like that. Okay. Um, or wait, not like that, because that's linking to DFFML operations. Is it not in script stocks? Care. Oh, yeah, it's not in here, so we should add it to there, too. Well, we should just do that one where... We should just do this. Um, fuck. Uh, this needs to be an issue. All of these need to be issues. Um, all right, so you can... Let's see. I guess, what is it going to so look like? So what does dogs care do? Basically, it only lists... So we won't... Why did we do this? Um... Oh, because we had some, at one point, we had something that we didn't want to list in here. And Yash, I think, knows what... Is happened. this about, like, when we create the docs, there were extra lines in the docs, and that got pushed? Uh... Oh, well, that was something that we used to do, right, because we did, we had them, so those files were auto-generated, right? And so then we would have to regenerate them every time, and now we just, now we just have the documentation generator regenerate them, right? Um, but, but this was because, um, for some reason, we had some plugins that we didn't want to document um, on the main docs page, and I can't remember why that was. Um, I think it might have been because we didn't have a good set of examples for them at the time or something. Um, but uh, there's an any file somewhere that has this. Grab, grab, or LS files. Grab. I never remember how many backslashes. No args. I oh, don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not, I guess I cannot remember why. Um, so, but anyways, basically what it is, is, and this is what that issue was about that I said we need to create is, um, 
for each of these, like for each entry point here, we list, um, for each entry point, we list all the packages. So the, the first entry is the entry point, and then everything after that is all of the packages in that entry point um, that that we should list on the plugins page, right? And we go through and we examine, we do introspection using scripts docs.py, and we do the args and configs method and pull out, you know, like what are all the arguments and configuration for this, or what is the configuration for each of these things? Um, and that, that lets us populate like, um, um, let's see, that lets us populate um, right, so if we're looking at, you know, what's the stage, what are the outputs, what are the inputs, right, and I don't know if we're still printing the spec anywhere, are we? Um, go by spec. One of these must have a valid spec. I guess not. Or we just have a lot of these get single usages. All right. Well, or I don't know. Hmm. I guess. Anyway, so we we basically the the point here is that you know, and if you go to models, this is probably a better example. But um, you know, we list what are the what are the config things for each one, and then what's the documentation string for that plugin, and this tells you which packages we should be looking in um, for that given entry point. And if it's not listed here, we won't document it. But the reality is, I don't know. At some point, we didn't want to document some of them, and that's why we did this. Um, at this point, we want to document all of them. So, and I just revamped the plugins.py, so I'll, I'll make it so that it's automated. Um, so, all right, so let's see. Then the other thing I was going to say with this is that, um, so we should like, oh, wait, I already said that. So let's move that explanation and then let's reorder this to show the visualization. Um, let's put this before we run the create command so that it's right. You're explaining what everything is. You show them visually what it looks like, and then you say, here's how we create the data flow. And to recreate that visualization you just saw, use this, right? Um, and so you can keep all of this text the same, but let's just move this this image um, up after Some we do the explanation. Do Does that make sense? Yes, yes, that makes sense. OK, cool. So let's see. Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, add it to script stocks care, and then I'll see how fast I actually get to that, right? Um, so let's see, where is this? Um, so, oops. Uh, let's move the visualization before the create command. Okay. And then. Now we train the model. I believe, let's see, I believe I have the data flow here. So, okay, yes, I do. So we're going to train. These are our features. Um, yeah, we need to change the naming stuff. We have an issue. For, uh, I think I don't think we created an issue for that. Thing. What what name? The naming of the features, we need to rename them, right? Oh, yeah. So, so, hmm. let's see. How best to do this? Um, Yeah, we had that that issue where we wanted to do the renaming, um, and then we have the remap operation, but that's not necessarily straightforward. Um, so, 
Let's see. Eh. So there's a couple ways we could do this. Um, we could, and now this one it involves recreating data flows, which is like annoying, but um, we could make it so that um, the definitions, um, we could make it so that the definitions, if, if an operation only has one output, then instead of dot result, it's just the same name as the definition, the auto created um, uh, definition name, right? Now that that might lead to some confusion. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, can you repeat what you just said? I didn't catch that. So we auto create the definitions, right? The definition names now. If you just do at op, right, and that's how we end up with these, you know, whatever the operation name is dot outputs dot result. Now we could auto create it such that if it only has one output, right, instead of doing dot outputs dot result, we just say flatten, right? Now, this may create some confusion because the definition name is the same as the operation name, uh, but it may be more, like, it may create confusion or it may be more straightforward. I'm not sure. So that's one option here. It's you see, it's, you think it's confusing? Yeah. Okay. It's better to have such as such, so we are explicit about what it is. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, so in that case... I think so. You have you have two options then, right? So you have the option where um, you use remap, right? Um, now that's that's basically sort of out of the question, right? Because this is a usage example, and, and that's that's not very elegant. Um, so with, because you have to throw the data flow in another data flow and everything. Um, actually, I think you just throw the get single one in another data flow. So mm, I don't know, um, but. Okay, so, and then you have the, you have one more thing that you could do, which is basically write another output operation or modify git single so that it, uh, it, it like, modify the spec of git single somehow, um, like the, the input values for git single so that you can do a remap by providing some kind of different value there because the, the um, let's see. Uh, cat features, right? So our current input for git single, oh shit. Um, so our current input for git single is what? Basically, result, 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 right? Okay, so yeah, we just provide our array, right? Now, what we could do is we could say, you know, if you provide something equals something, Right, like get single. You could modify get single to basically, you know, to to split the value here, or to take not an array, but like, you know, it could also take a dictionary, right? Um, and if you do a dictionary, if you pass if you pass a dictionary instead of an array, then it maps that way, right? Like you can modify that operation. You could you could you could make a patch that changes that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense. Does that sound? I mean, and I have, well, I think we've all sort of may have found ourselves in this this situation where where that might have been helpful. Um, so does that seem like something we should do for get single, um, or does that sound like maybe you know two usages or or would be confusing? I know we have some places where there are t there are two use two syntaxes for things, but I also think that if we provide examples then people know what they can do, right? So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Sounds reasonable. Okay, so let's make an issue to, um, let's open an issue here, so, um, issues with older Hobie cats. Looking on tra Craigslist, dreaming of boats. Um, there are no boats in my future. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's make an issue. Uh, 
All right. Um, okay, no, not docs. So let's do feature request, um, operation, output, uh, git single. Uh, uh, alternate input format of dict. Okay, so let's modify git single so that if the input, um, the spec input is a dict and this is going to be this sh probably should be pretty easy because what you're basically going to do is you're just going to look at if it's a dict you basically make the existing input the dict dot dot values right and then you remap it at the end um and if it's not um then then you just you know you leave it as it is right so or actually i guess at the end yeah you do dot values and then at the end you do a reverse you reverse the dictionaries um with a with that zip i think it's like yeah i can't remember what it is but it's like you, you split it with items and then you do zip or something um i can't remember um so yeah, basically it's... yeah so i love that i wish there was a slightly more elegant way to do it but it's pretty good let's modify git single so that if the spec is dict um instead of a list we rename the output <laughs> final and I'll output according to the keys of the dict. Okay. All right. Great. Um, shall I put assignee as you, Sakshom? Are you going to do this one? Uh, yeah, I'll do this. Okay. Okay. And then obviously we're going to need to, we will also need to update the examples and um, we also need to update the examples for in the doc string. Um, okay. So, all right, and that can serve as the tests. Okay. So. All right, we are we are at an hour and a half here, so, um, and we are not done with this this our one out of four pull requests right now. So, I'm going to say, okay, so let's see, we're almost done with this one though. So let's just finish this out and see where it goes. Okay, so actually one second. So we're almost done with this, but, okay. Okay, um, and then this one, model PyTorch. Okay, so this is, this looks hefty. I'm not going to be able to review this uh, right now. Um, oh, but we did find another thing we need to add to the documentation. Plugins and here, under secrets. Okay, so. so. Yeah, the secrets one is the GitHub workflow, and I think you wrote it already. Okay. Um, Let me just add it here so it's all in one place. Okay, and then... Um, all right, okay. So, yeah, this is not going to get reviewed right now. Um, yeah, I don't think... I thought, no, no, I don't have... I want to do a more thorough look at this. Um, let's see. And then this one... I reviewed, we still need to do this. So is there, let's see. I still need to run through this one too, which I haven't done. Um, so that's gonna be a thing. So I wanna run through this, but the tests, are the tests passing at this point or did we have another, let's see. Yeah, we have that entry point issue. Okay, we have the entry point issue. Um, Oh, and the entry point issue was solved, will be solved by that. Okay, so once you make that, so then I'm going to run through this one. So, and I may have some notes on on style. So, um, 
will run yeah. through uh, John through offline. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, basically the result of most of these is that okay that I'm going to have to do this offline. I'm sorry we took so long. Um, Alright, so let's see, and then the Nats one, where are we at on the Nats one? Or, well, you're going to give me, you're going to give me a summary of everything on where we're at in an issue. So, is there anything you want to say other than, other than what you're going to write? Noggin? Sorry, that's good. No worries, is there anything you want to say about Nats other than what you're going to write in the issue? Oh yeah, uh, like, I... I was thinking of renaming primary node and sub node to data flow node and operations. Right, I, I'm not, I didn't hear what you said there. I was like, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Should we rename primary node and sub node to data flow node and operations? Um, should we rename primary node and sub node to data flow and operations? So. Okay, so eventually, um, okay. So eventually we're going to want like a truly distributed setting here, in which case, well, in which case everything is, is a, a, a subnode, right? But also nothing is a subnode. So um, uh, I, think, I think perhaps worker, worker node and, uh, yeah. and like, you know, dispatcher or something um, okay, might, be, might be better terminology. Do you have any other? Yeah, we have. So we do have another dispatch. Well, we have the dispatch function, right? Yeah. So, um, so let's see. Uh, terminology. Uh, primary. Uh, or data flow. Yeah. See, the problem is data flow is also overloaded, right? Um, so. Okay. Um, um, let's see. I mean, what we're really trying to denote here, we have the the we have the nodes running operation implementations, right? I feel like worker is probably a pretty solid word for that. Um, they're doing work. Um, and then we've got we've got things that we've got you know the the decide deciding. Uh, the deciders, like they're they're deciding things, and usually that would be called like the orchestrator or whatever. But well, the orchestrators, eh, we've already got an orchestrator too. But the thing is, yeah, the thing is, orchestrator. Yeah, I think orchestrator might make the most sense here. It is it is orchestrating. Um, so let's do orchestrator worker. Okay. Yeah, it's like yeah, exactly, right? And and if you if you start to have primary secondary also implies that there's like one, two, right? Well that's like yeah. that's not the case, right? We have to sort of have this Yeah. So let's go with orchestrator worker there. Um okay, so and then basically and then examples so usage okay let's we'll finish out this guy in this meeting just so that we all know how to use these image operations and then um, and then the, so for Gitter chatbot you said that you made the changes that I had talked about right yes okay but it looks like okay one particular thing like uh, you might want to check is if the data program command is correct if the data flow weren't correct so yeah, it so. works, but I don't know if we can like remove parts. Okay, so all right, okay, okay. Oh yeah, and then testing this. How do we test this? Um, okay. Um, so. Da, 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 da. All right. Um, Uh, 
Uh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, the other thing was that we were going to put in a, a... Oh, the data flow run. Oh, yeah, it does the data flow run. Well, did it work for you? Yeah, it works, but uh, like, can we trim it down or... Is that can we trim it down? Yeah, okay, so let me see. Like, does this uh, source records and you have to do all this, right? Source records, temp data flow, inputs community name. Yeah, okay, so this is also the thing where we probably need, we probably, this is another good thing that we should probably Yeah, uh, uh, I, like, uh, yeah that, that's one thing. Like, can you just have a data flow then? Yeah, like yeah, every data flow. Without data. Yeah, yeah, without records. So let's make an issue for that. Yeah, I've been I've been thinking this myself because that's rather non-intuitive. Um, if you're just running the data flow, right? Which is, at first everything was about records, and now it's not. So data flow. So CLI data flow run uh, run command without uh, without records. Okay, so. Records aren't applicable to all data flows. Okay. So, okay. So, all right. I would really like us to be able to test this, is the thing. Um, and if we have it, like, I don't know how we test the get the communication. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I think that, um, okay, well, mm, I really want to test this. Uh, so, I mean, we can, like, so, yes, it's one thing to test it, and then, but there's also another thing to, like, you know, to, to have unit tests for it, and this is, the, we keep adding tutorials, and we, and we keep losing uh, testability over them, right, every time we add them without tests. So, um, I would say that we need to perhaps make the, um, the URL here something that we get from the config. Um, so, yeah, right, we have secret, right, and then we also maybe have URL, which defaults to this. So, let's say... Sorry, in which URL? Okay, so the URL, right, and when I say the URL, I mean the base of the URL here. So, oh, okay. and this is, this is, unfortunately, this is going to be, uh, perhaps a oh, significant... Oh, we want to make it, uh, like, general, not yeah. just before the So, let's, let's make, well, and so it is going to be specific, right, all of this API stuff is very, it's Gitter's API, right, but, but in order yeah. to test it, we essentially need to, we either need to mock the calls that async IO HTTP, the AIO HTTP is making, right? And we need to, like, we need to, um, we need we need to use unit test mock to return different values, or we can do the HTTP test thing where we basically make our own little HTTP server, and uh, or actually we can use AIO HTTP for that too, perhaps. I think they have some testing in there that might be good for this, but oh, so like we have a mock server. Yeah, we have a mock server. Makes these records and like okay. Exactly right. So we 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 pre-can responses and replies, and okay. then you basically use you know, you, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little more work on your part, right? But the result is that our, uh, you know, if somebody okay, ever changes the tutorial or anything, we 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 know that it works, right? So, okay, okay. um. Yeah, so let's see. So let's make uh, the base part of this URL a part of the config, which uh, something like API stir equals um, right. Um, we also need to make to write a test for this for this whole thing um, we can use uh, the AIO HTTP testing interfaces 
or HTTP test, um, whatever whatever you please. Um, I don't know which one's going to be easier. I mean, HTTP test is obviously like something that I that I wrote because I found that it was it, it I thought it was the easier way to do things, but it also the handling the the handlers the request handling is not going to be built in for you there. I believe AIO HTTP might give you some more more with that. Um, but I also don't know how it's going to interact with the rest of this. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. Like, anyways, sweet. I'll have time to review that. Great, great. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, like, yeah, it's a little more effort, but, you know, we always, um, yeah, 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 testing is always good, testing. right? Yeah, so let's see. Um, or else when it breaks, it's like <laughs> no one can use it. So uh, that's our current problem with the, uh, the, uh, the automating classification, which is next on my docket. I believe it's like one of the last things we need for the point three eight release. All right, so yeah, we also need the immediate response. We also need what? Immediate response for HTTPS. Uh, sorry, you're. I think you're a little far away from your mic. I'm having trouble. Is everybody? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I have. This is my not my issue. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, we need an immediate response. For this oh yes, yes, that. that one. Okay, great, great. Did you actually also? Did you explain? Um, did you explain? I think I also had asked you to cut this into lines and explain. Where did it go? Oh, yeah, okay, had I, I just, asked. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I just started. I didn't explain. Okay. Yeah, I, I okay, explained. So let's. Uh, use lines uh, and explain what yeah, each operation is doing. Okay, great. Um, so this one is now reviewed. All right. Okay. And NLP. So yeah, so you're going to make that change for the CI, and I'm going to run through this. I'll do this after this meeting. Um, and then I'll run through this one. And we can finish out this tutorial here, and we'll call it a day. Um, all right. And so, I'm sorry, Himanshu, we haven't we 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 didn't we didn't actually look. At, well, we did look a little bit at what you've done here. But do you have anything that you want to talk about specifically today? Other than other than this uh, PR. No. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. I don't have any specific. All right. Sweet. Okay, so I will look at that. Um, okay, so and then let's just jump back to this and finish this out. So let's train the model. Yeah, that will take this will, five minutes. Oh, okay, we should have started this command a while ago. All right, we're going to call it a day on this one. Um, Oh, the last thing I had to say is these images. Uh, so these are, I assume, images from that data set, right? No, I just Google searched the names of few classes. OK. And I, I may, maybe they are a part of the data set, or maybe they are not. OK, so, so if they are not, then that's better, because we need to predict on, on trend. Yes, data. it is. Um, however, did you use the search? functions where you can get the like permissively licensed images and if not do you have you seen that and do you want me to show like it uh, would be good for me to show um do you know yeah, how to do that can you show okay I let's yeah let's do that so um so and let's write in the meeting minutes that we're doing this because this is also a good thing to include with our you know requiring randomly generated data and test cases so um okay so um, uh, how to search uh, C recording for how to search uh, for um, permissively licensed images. Okay. Okay, so we'll go to Google um, and we will go to, let's see. All right, OK. So um, we're looking for what kind of, of, of flower here. Um, OK, so tiger lily. Let's try that. So tiger lily. 
tiger lily flower. And then you go to, what is it, tools, usage rights, and then, uh, let's see, labeled for reuse, as long as we're not going to do any reuse. Okay. And so our right Wikipedia is a solid choice. Um, well, I guess let's let's find out if it is, right? So we go here, follow the Wikipedia link, and we check the, let's see, permission, attribution required. Okay, we're using this file. So ideally, attribution required, I mean, that's fine, right? That's like MIT license and everything, but, you know, ideally we find something that's public domain because um, then we can just sort of use it, right, and not have to, like, have a section of our documentation that says where we got images from. Um, now where is, there should be a public domain image search somewhere. Public, public domain image search. And actually, you guys are about to see some public domain code show up in the sources. Um, so, hey, there's an iris. Uh, let's see, uh, 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 wait, it's in my, okay, marked for public domain, sweet, or CC0, all right, great, so, public domain stuff we can just use. Um, so then, yeah, you can grab it from over here. Um, all right, great. Now I learned something new too. Um, so yeah, that that's obviously, you know, so licensing, it's all great, um, but it re most licenses require attribution, which means that we have to put attribution somewhere, right? We have to say where we got something from uh, and the license that we got it under, um, which is fine, right? And it's good to give people credit for things, but from the perspective of our documentation is cluttered and uh, it's it's definitely easier to just put public domain stuff there, right? Because um, you don't have to give, my, my understanding is you do not have to give an attribution for public domain. I'm, I may be wrong, but um, you know, if I am, then if someone ever finds out, please let me know. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's, yeah, we'll see, see if you can do that, and I don't know what kind of sizes they have here, but I don't, and I don't know what kind of resolution, what kind of resolution are you operating on here? Oh well, yeah, I'm operating on the medium one. The medium one. So they one. have it. All right, great, perfect. So yeah, let's, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, we'll try to do, you know, for, for future things, and I'll make a little clip of this too, when I eventually get around to do that, and we can do... Um, you know, we'll try to use public domain stuff if possible. And what I was going to say is, I'm about to take out the the uh, the async IO open file stuff in CSV source and JSON source and replace it with a file based lock. Um, and there's this library called file lock. It's a Python library that's public domain and it's a single file. So I'm going to dump that whole file into source or into util, um, and you'll see the giant public domain header on it. Um, and where and the, the git hub repo um and that way it's basically there were some issues with async io you guys uh know streamlit have you guys seen streamlit no all right it's, it's pretty cool you can basically build a it's like it's python but it'll build a little U, HTML J JavaScript UI for you. They aren't like extremely fully featured, but they can do, you know, it's enough to get you sort of up and running and, and building a UI around, like specifically they target machine learning stuff. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I was, somebody was doing a project with that and uh, I was, I, they ran into some issues and so I, I pushed some async IO fixes and, and uh, we'll get those merged too. But basically, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some file locking that, that we long time ago, Sudarsana had been we we'd initially done the implementation so we could use the merge command, but we really knew we needed file locking, and so that's going to come into play basically. And those CSV and JSON sources are going to change a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, actually, probably all file sources. Maybe I'll just do. But anyways, all right. Does anybody have anything else before we wrap up our unfortunately long again meeting? Yeah, can you link the things uh, for the public domain stuff? Oh yeah. In the notes. Yes. So, um, uh, 
public domain image search. All right, sweet. Well, thanks everyone, and I hope you all have a great weekend, and I hope that puppy does not shoe your other shoe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, see you guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye.